It's time to put Keldon Johnson in the spotlight and check out what he needs to improve on next season. You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Lockdown Spurs on the Lockdown NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Kins 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you back in TGIF, and it is the offseason. I am feeling it right now. We've been spoiled, kind of, since the last few years. There really hasn't been much of an NBA offseason. You know, it kind of was like season over. Felt like weeks later, then they're back in action. But, yeah. It's going to be a while before your Spurs are back on the court, but we're trying to keep you going right here on Los. And today we're going to be putting in Keldon Johnson on that hot seat. Look, he got paid. He got paid a lot of money. What does he need to work on next season to earn that money? And hopefully, hopefully, maybe prove the Vegas prediction that the Spurs are going to be one of the worst teams in the league. Uh, wrong. And also go over some news and notes uh, if we have some time. Who is helping me today? Put KJ on the hot seat, he is Jack Thompson with the San Antonio Sports Star. Jack, welcome back to Lockdown Spurs. And man, th- th- now I remember what an NBA offseason feels like, and this is it. Yep, we are we are in the thick of the dark period for sure. There's literally nothing going on. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing going on. And look, um, like I said earlier, you know, it's been a while since there's been an NBA offseason, right? I mean, when, what was the last time? What, three years ago? Was a, a traditional NBA offseason like this? Yeah, I would say 2019 was the last time that there yeah. was a legit offseason because 2020, and then we had the bubble. Right. And that just basically fed straight into the next season with just right. like a, two months of offseason. So, yeah, it's really mm-hmm. been – been three years since we had this slow moving, nothing to talk yeah. about really often. <laughs> yeah, and I've been telling the listeners of Locked On Spurs, um, you know, be happy if there's even three episodes a week. But hey, it happened this week. There's three. This is the third. So yay, we did something. We accomplished something here, Jack, and you're helping me out here. But sure. let's go ahead. Oh, well, before we do that. Uh, thanks for making Lockdown Spurs your uh, first listen each and every day, free and available wherever you get podcasts. And don't forget to check out Jack on San Antonio Sports Star. He is the co-host of the Saturday Morning Hangover. He's going to tell you all about that later on the show. But Jack, let's go ahead and dive into this episode, and we'll start off with Keldon Johnson. The man got paid. He got paid handsomely. Oh, yeah. um, was it like 80 mil for uh, 80 mil contract? for four yeah, years? 80 mil for four years. Now, before we get to specifics, you know, points, defense, what you want to see. What are your general thoughts about KJ at this point of his career? Uh, we know DeJounte has gone. He's getting the KJ that is getting paid like the Spurs big man on the roster. What are your thoughts about Kelvin Johnson as he's uh, staring at a new season? Man, I, I'm very excited for what KJ is going to bring to the table for us. He's going to be our bona fide leader on and off the court. He's going to be looked to to do majority of the shooting and scoring. So I'm excited to see uh, him really let loose and us get to see the the full bag that the Mustang carries with himself on the court. Should be fun. Look, look, there's one thing that I'm a little leery on, and we'll perhaps we'll talk about this more in the second segment here, is as of this recording, there is no, at least, point guard. For the Spurs, is it Primo? Mm-hmm. Is it Wesley? Is it Trey Jones? You know, yeah. Dejounte Murray was that creator. You know, he was the facilitator. Uh, you know, even when he broke down defenses, uh, getting to the rim, that left KJ wide open for those threes he took, and you know, he made them in the mm-hmm. second half of the season. Do you think that's going to hinder his his uh, play next season, or do you think they're just going to maybe call more plays for him? I think in the beginning there will definitely be some sort of learning curve because, like you said, he's used to attention uh, attention being taken away from him, and he gets easier looks that way. But we saw, you know, prior to this last season, before you know Dejounte really blew up into what he is now, that uh, Keldon still had a really good year. His points total only jumped four points from. Uh, the 2021 season into the 2022. So that's only two shots that he was really making more with all that 
DJ was doing for him. So I think just in the beginning, there will be some learning curve with defense kind of being keyed in on him. But I think it will really round out into form, and he's going to be fine for sure. Yeah, you know, he's embracing the rebuild. At least that's what he said uh, during the Summer League broadcast with the NBA TV that he's aware where this team is going. I mean, I think I think all the players are they understand what the plan is. It's they're going to tank. It's going to be a long season. They got their yep. eyes on the future, whether that be Wimby or Scoot or whoever they hopefully they get the number 1 pick. But even if they come up short, they should be in a very good spot to get a quality player in after next season. So he's all in. Uh you know, he got that extension, but with the money he's he's now the highest paid spur on the roster should expectations be high for him to make a significant leap next season or just continue just making baby steps uh it really is what how you define significant i mean just with the ball in his hands and the more touches he's going to get there will definitely be you know leaps in stat wise for sure but i want to see sort of like the basketball side of things kind of grow like him being the leader him setting the tone on offense and defense him becoming a little bit more of a facilitator because he's he only averaged what was it two assists last season so just more it's going to be a lot more than scoring for him in terms of how his growth will be determined but I definitely see him making jumps in basically every statistical category he was already playing 32 minutes a game last season so not a whole lot more he can play (laughs) yeah it's just now he's going to have the ball in his hands he's going to be creating the plays so it's just just growth as a basketball player more than just, you know, a straight score like we had presumed him to be. So, it like I said, there will be some, some learning curve to it, and he might have a rough start to his season, kind of like he did last season. But uh, I think he'll really round into form, and we'll be looking at the end of the season at, at a, you know, 20-point-plus mm-hmm. type of guy every night. So I, I'm really excited about the growth he's going he's gonna to have this season. Yeah, me too. Look, uh, last season, I came into the uh, 21-22 season thinking this was going to be his team. You know, you got Team USA uh, run mm-hmm. under his belt. You know, he was flaunting that gold medal uh, two seasons at the um, Summer League. It, he seemed poised to really come out. As you mentioned, you know, he can, He kind of came out slow out of the gates. Whether yeah. that be, you know, just fatigue from a long uh, off season. The traveling back and forth, who knows? But hey, look, you got a better second half. My point is, though, is that I had my expectations high, and in my opinion, they fell short. Uh, I was projecting him to be a, a consistent twenty-point scorer for the whole season. I really was last, uh, last mm-hmm. year, but that that turned into Dejounte. Uh, but with Dejounte gone now, yeah, I'm like, I I I I know I'm having high expectations for him. Maybe I shouldn't do that, Jack, but I really am. Uh, and I think that he is now looked upon as the face of this roster. He is now oh, going yeah. to be the key guy for this roster. Uh, he's going to be te- uh, teaming up with Devin Vassell. Uh, I was told um, that he and Vassell are working out together a lot, just them two together. So that tells me they're going to want to really take the reins. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, uh, I think KJ is poised. Man, yeah, I agree. I, I'm right there with you. I don't know if he's gonna have a significant leap or a leap. Are you expecting Dejounte Murray leap, or are you expecting something less than that? Well, I mean, if you look at the way that he's been uh, progressing season by season, yeah, he's, um, you know, if you look at Dejounte's stats next to it, he's made better leaps in each of his first three seasons than. DeJounte did. So there will definitely be a leap, I would say, that is kind of like DeJounte's. But again, DeJounte's was a lot of his major leap was, you know, the assist total and the scoring. 
I'm not sure Keldon will ever get up to around 10 assists per game like DeJounte was close to averaging. But I think that he can supplement that with, you know, scoring and uh, rebounding. I think he can mm-hmm. make a uh, leap there as well. And really just his, his defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's going to be looked upon. You know, Devin will probably continue to guard the best player on the court. But all the best teams have – multiple you know all stars right. or all nba guys so Keldon's gonna have to step up and you know take the defensive charge on one of those guys so i'm excited to see his growth in that aspect of the game as well but i think he, not quite a leap like Dejounte had last season and because i don't not sure Keldon will will be in the all-star conversation unless he really just blows up <laughs> right but yeah. A lot also coming with being an all star, like we've seen year in and year out, being Spurs fans over the past, uh, you know, several seasons since we've lost the big three, is can't, hard to be an all star when your team isn't winning games. So, yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah. really sure if he'll fall into that category, but I do expect him to be, you know, at least 22 a night or more. Mm-hmm. Uh, last season, he also led the NBA for a good while in three point percentage. So I'd really be, I'm really excited to see if he can keep that aspect of his game mm-hmm. growing. And really, the biggest thing he needs to learn on the offensive end and really get into his bag is shooting and scoring off of the dribble. Mm-hmm. He's really only a spot up three guy, and that's great. You you need that on your team, but if you're going to be the face of a franchise and looked upon as the leading scorer, you've got to be able to do it off the dribble too. So we'll see how much of that he's added into his game over this off season. And mm-hmm. uh, I think, I think he'll be pretty solid in that aspect too. I think of a perfect way to segue into our next segment. When we get back, we're going to be looking at some specific numbers. What did he average last year? Uh, were there any numbers that kind of leapt out, uh, you know, from his play? that he needs to work on next season. Once again, we're here with Jack Thompson. He's with San Antonio Sports Star, and we'll be continuing our chat about Keldon Johnson. But I want to talk to you about betonline.net. It's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including MLB, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in-game betting scores and podcasts that they got you covered. They even got the lines right now on the Spurs title chances. If you really want to go and get depressed, go check it out at (laughs) BetOnline. Head to BetOnline today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. BetOnline, where the game starts. We're back with Jack Thompson right here on Locked On Spurs. He is with San Antonio Sports Star and co-host of the Saturday Morning Hangover. And, uh, yeah, continue listening. He's going to tell you how to listen to him and much, much more of what's going on over at the Star. Now, we kind of gave our overall thoughts about KJ in the first segment. Let's go ahead and dig, dig into some numbers now. And, you know, last season really, really, you know, took off after a January the month of February and March and April, you saw progression, especially in the points per game. And I think this is to your point about him up in his scoring. In February, 10 games, 19.3 points per game. March, 13 games, 20 points per game. And in April, six games, okay, smaller sample size, but nevertheless, 21.3. And he did that averaging about just about 33 minutes a game. So you, mm-hmm. you can expect those numbers to continue. Uh, but yeah, you're talking about a slow start. I, I mean, it, I mean, was it really slow? <laughs> in October, 16 points per game in 30 minutes. And then it looks like he kind of hit up a wall in November with 14 and a half. But nevertheless, you like how he ended his season. But Jack, we know he's going to put up numbers. Is there a specific stat that you need to see him improve on next season? Uh, is it the moving on the three, creating your own shot, or is it just something else? Definitely, like you said, creating your own shot off the dribble, I think will be really key for him, uh, you know, with vamping up those scoring numbers because he's going to be really keyed in on and he's not going to get nearly as many, you know, wide open threes or wide open lanes to drive. So scoring and handling off the dribble, creating, 
it's definitely something that he needs to take a, a huge leap in mm-hmm. if he wants to, uh, you know, raise that scoring average even more. Another thing uh, I'd like to see is his rebounding total go up a little bit more. I mean, six yeah, rebounds I'm a right game there last you. season mm-hmm. isn't bad, but he could. I feel like he can definitely jump that up to around eight, maybe nine. And a lot of that is just, you know, hustle and, and want to when it comes to rebounding. So he's just got to kind of get in that mindset that I'm going to go and grab every board. Uh, his defensive uh, statistics aren't great. I mean, only 0.8 steals a game last year, only 0.2 blocks. So definitely lots of room for improvement there on the defensive end. And uh, what's really exciting is with the additions we've made, you know, in the off season with drafting Jeremy and, you know, we have Doug, I think we will be able to see Keldon play a lot more his traditional position this year in the league at playing the three that is. So I think that will also kind of help open up his game a little bit more, but um, I think really just the scoring off the, off the bounce, his defensive statistics, and then lastly, he only averaged two assists per game last year in the 32 minutes that he played. So I think that number definitely has to at least double over this season if he right. wants the defense to really like respect him off the dribble rather than he's not just looking to score, that you can't just bring the help side right over and like double-team him because he's able to find that open guy. So I think the defensive or the rather the assist total if you see that go up then uh he's really having a good year and really figuring out the nba game more than just Mm -hmm. you know how to score the ball yeah you you mentioned the rebounding and i was definitely gonna bring that up but how key is the team for kj to be cleaning the glass last season the spurs were eight and two when he had nine or more rebounds Nine and three when he had eight or more defensive rebounds. So uh, there's something there. You know, if he can up that, you know, creates a second chance opportunities for himself or his teammates, that will mm-hmm. be great. You know, the, the the stats show that there. You know, I like that he has been pretty good at maintaining low turnovers throughout his uh, career. You know, yeah, really, really takes care of the ball. Two. Yeah. Really good but at that- valuing the ball. Oh, yeah, definitely very good at valuing the ball. But, again, that, that came with DeJounte creating, you know, mm-hmm. very easy plays for him to make. Now he's going to have the ball in his hands, and he's going to be the one, you know, yeah. creating a lot of those plays that are left over from DeJounte leaving. So mm-hmm. if, he, if he can really maintain, you know, if he can keep his turnovers, you know, four and below, I think, with how much the ball will be in his hand and how new it will kind of be for him to be playing in that type of offensive role. I think that'll be pretty significant too, if he can maintain uh, keeping those low turnover numbers. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I also expect that just to even go up too. just, he's going to have, like you said, the, the ball more in his hands next season. So that may uh, spike a bit next season. I was going to ask you about his free throw attempts. He, you know, in the month of April, 5.3 attempts. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I need to see those attempts go up a lot more uh, yeah. in, heading into the new season. I want him to be aggressive. I want him to, uh, you know, try to, you know, get the foul, do something. Mm-hmm. Last season as a whole, 76 games played, 3.1 free throw attempts. That's a little on the low side for me. Got to yeah, see that gotta number. at least yeah. double that for sure. Mm-hmm. And that's an easy way too to, to get your, your points per game up, getting those free throw attempts up. We saw, you know, in, in James Harden's best years of scoring, he was getting about like 12 attempts at the line per game. So if uh, he can, you know, double that or even more so, we'll definitely see a big spike in his point per game total. You know, the intangibles too, I would like to, for him, you know, to – I don't know. There's no, there's no, there's no reason for to doubt his energy. You know, the guy's a ball of energy. We all see that he's very mm-hmm. hyper. You know, very. You know, yells. He can yells for everything. You know, picks up a glass of water. He's probably yelling right now. Um, but you know, I would like to see him assert himself a lot more. You know, 
get maybe don't get attacked, but talk to refs more. Yeah, you know, I I know these are these are still young guys finding their way in the NBA, but I would want him to be a more more assertive in that department. A lot of a lot of times last season, you saw him get called for a foul, and sure he would be upset, but he would kind of just put the ball down, and walk away. Dejounte yeah. was starting to talk to more refs last year. You really, I mean, he wasn't in the face and screaming like Draymond, but you saw Dejounte really chatting with refs. I would like to see Kelton take that kind of role, whether it be a fouls on him or for his teammates, because somebody's going to have to be that alpha, and he's getting mm-hmm. paid like an alpha, so act like an alpha. Jack, your thoughts? Yeah, no, I I definitely agree with that. The uh, the intangibles have to grow a lot. I mean. When you're stepping, like we've said repeatedly, into this space of the franchise role, you've got to can't just uh, you know walk the walk. You got to talk the talk too, and back everything up. Have all your teammates back. Set the tone on offense and defense on a nightly basis. It's a it's going to be a whole new a whole new world per se for Keldon this this next season. And uh, I think he's definitely got it in him to step in and, and be that alpha. But uh, mm-hmm. it's just gonna you know trial and error and take some time on when to do so but i think he can definitely step in and and thrive in that role for sure exactly but there's gonna be a lot of eyes on Kelden next season he's getting paid like an alpha and uh, a lot of sports fans will be looking at his development it's it's his time i think he needs to really make a leap whether it be a an astronomical leap or just a significant leap uh considering for him all eyes will definitely be on Keldon, but we want to hear what you have to say. You can let, uh, well, Jack's going to tell you all about how you can chat with him in just a moment. But make sure to let Jack know uh, as soon as you can on social media. He'll tell you about that in a while. We definitely want to know what you think as well. Make sure to subscribe to Lockdown Spurs wherever you get your favorite podcast. Where When we get back, uh, we're going to wrap up with some Spurs news and notes and get you the 411 on what's going on with the silver and black this offseason. We're back with Jack Thompson right here on Locked On Spurs. He is the co-host of the Saturday Morning Hangover over at San Antonio Star. Great show. I love it. They they do a bang-up job. He'll tell you more about that later. Jack, you got some time for some quick Spurs news and notes for the fans? Oh, yeah, definitely. All right. Well, let's start it off with congratulations to the Spurs radio voice, Bill Shoning. He will be inducted into the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Join the Spurs, Jack, back in 2001. Is called four of the five Spurs titles. And it's almost like Spurs and Shoning are now synonymous. Like you can't see them um, separated, but congratulations to Bill Shoning. Your thoughts? Yeah, he's definitely a staple here in San Antonio. When you think of the, the Spurs, there's only a couple voices that you really, you know, that ring out through history. And his is definitely, you know, first and foremost up there. And a huge accomplishment for him. Not mm-hmm. surprised in the slightest. He's one of the best in the business. You can literally ask anyone about that across the mm-hmm. nation, and they'll tell you the same thing. So, yeah, huge, huge honor for him, but expected nothing less, and that, that's super awesome. Yeah, a couple things on that. First of all, if you ever met him, he's a great guy, uh, very, very humble. He'll talk to you about anything. He doesn't have to be sports. He does a mean Harry Carey impersonation, the old Chicago Cubs um play-by-play guy it's awesome nearly spot on he's come on locked on spurs a couple times jack and has done that harry carey voice for a low That's awesome. and I, yeah he's also and by the way the other other voices that are synonymous with the spurs it's got to be jack thompson right jack yeah <laughs> maybe one day <laughs> maybe one day in other spurs news uh well jack are you into nfts uh do you have, not do you really, have any, no do you have any nfts i do not I have a slew of them uh, because when NBA Top Shop uh, opened up like its first initial steps, I was their first year a Spurs ambassador and I had a choice. I can either get, you know, for my work, I can get paid X amount. So I think it was about like 200 bucks, you know, for a full year or um, get payment in NFT. So I opted for NFTs and I'm glad I did. Um, yeah, and I bring cool. this, yeah, and I bring this up because the first NFT featuring Mono Ginobili has been released by Panini. Yes, he is the first Panini Spurs NFT legend. 
and it goes to Manu. Not Tony, not Tim, not Tony, not David, not Ice. It went to Manu. Um, it's a he's wearing like his basic white uniform going over a layup, but there is a chase NFT. It's a gold uh, labeled colored version of the NFT. If you want to see what that NFT looks like and you want to buy one and they're not going for a lot of money right now, the starting for a very common one is about 20 bucks. But if you pull that gold card, forget about it. You, you might get a nice penny in return. Uh, so enough at 29 bucks. So they are now at panini.com. Go check it out. Also, congratulations to Spurs young man, Joe Wieskamp. He tied the knot with his longtime college sweetheart, Mackenzie Wieskamp now. So congratulations to them. And finally, Spurs Give is hosting a back-to-school bash at the AT&T Center. What does that mean? Free school supplies, free health exams, and more uh, for your kids, K through 12 to get back to school. Where was, I mean, man, imagine getting, going to the AT&T center back in our day, Jack, and getting all this free stuff from the Spurs and they're setting you up. If you go there with free internet too, it's, it's amazing. Way to go Spurs gift. Jack, your thoughts. Yeah, that that's truly amazing. Huge for the community. There are so many less fortunate that don't have, you know, the, the uh, availability of getting school supplies and, especially getting, you know, internet that the, they're offering too. So mm -hmm. that's huge on the Spurs, always giving back to the community. Can't say I'm shocked in the slightest because the Spurs organization is really great about helping out San Antonio as a whole rather than just entertaining us on the court. So props to the Spurs. Keep up the great work. We, uh, we're not surprised in the slightest, but, man, that's, that's really yeah, that's fantastic awesome. what they're doing. Yeah, that's awesome. It's also, by the way, I mentioned that NFT earlier. There was another NFT, but it wasn't via Panini. The Spurs, remember they released that Popovich NFT one? They only made 1,336 of them. Did you ever get one? No, I did not get one. No, you didn't get one. No, I didn't get one either, but I don't know. I'm leaning towards getting the mono NFT. Yeah, I'm, that's I'm pretty leaning cool. towards it. Yeah, I'm leaning towards it, but um, yeah, don't go down that rabbit hole. And once you go down that rabbit hole, you're, you're done. You're gonna want to get all the players. Is there is there an NFT that you you would like to have? Whether it be NBA player, NFL, uh, who would it be? What sports NFT would you want? Man, I'm not really that well versed in you know the NFT world, so I don't know very many okay. off the top of okay, my head. How about head. this? How about this? If is there a play in the sports world? NHL, NFL, NBA, whatever that you would like to see captured on an NFT that you would like to own. Oh man, I mean, one of my favorite players of all time is uh, Jason Williams, White Chocolate. So maybe his elbow pass would be pretty sick, or some of the crazy stuff that he did on the court would be dope. Uh, man, talking Spurs. Timmy hitting that three would be incredible. Uh, old Manu dunking on Chris Bosch. That would be pretty awesome. Uh, hmm. Tony hitting that bank shot. Oh, yeah. And, I yeah, that. I mean, now that I think about it, there's definitely a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't go down the rabbit hole if you do find an NV store selling those kind of moments. But we're done talking. We want to hear from you. Now, before I let you know what's going on at Locked On Spurs, Jack is going to take the mic now and tell you why you need to be checking out the San Antonio Sports Star. Jack, what's going on over there in your neck of the woods? Yes, sir. So over here at the Sports Star, it's really just been pledged myself and Michael Jimenez holding everything down. All the guys have been in Oxnard all week, having a blast out at Cowboys training camp. But when it comes to Saturday morning from uh, 7 to 9 a.m., Always, you can tune in, 94.1 FM. You can catch us online at thesportstar.com, YouTube Live, Facebook Live. Just search the Saturday Morning Hangover, and you'll be able to find Pledge and I's beautiful uh, faces <laughs> bright and early in the morning. Very early. We're, yeah, <laughs> quite early for sure. But we're chopping it up every week hitting all the major sports storylines, talk a little sneakers, talk a little music, 
you know, we nerd out a little bit when it comes to MCU or animes that we're watching, stuff like that. So if any of that, you know, tickles your fancy, tune on in to Pledge and I. We always have a great time every weekend. Super fun, lighthearted show. We just kind of keep it to like you're talking with your best friends at the bar about sports and what's going on in your lives. So mm-hmm. if you want a very fun and lighthearted show that hits all the major sports storylines that you might not have been able to keep up with throughout the week, Pledge and I got you every Saturday. It's the Saturday morning hangover on the San Antonio Sports Star, 94.1 FM, YouTube and Facebook Live as well. And yeah, tune in. It's a great time every week. We always have a blast. Yeah, I, I you know, in the next, well, whenever you get around to it, I hope there is soon, but I know you're going to nerd out, but I hope y'all address the the DCEU failing right now. It's oh, yeah. what's going on all of your All of your tweets about it. God. I mean, it's like every day. It's like, what now? What more are you going to, like, axe? What more are you going to kill? How do you kill Batgirl when it was done? When it was completely done? Just release it. Just whatever. Throw it out there. It was done. Yeah, that's kind of odd. I did see, though, that it was being comp to really bad television. And it's a movie, so definitely not a great look. But, I mean, you might you made the whole thing. You might as well release it. Yeah, you know, worst case scenario, just put it out there like on, you know, HBO Max or, or whatever, yeah. the CW. Just throw it out there for fans. I mean, it, it it had star power. It had Michael Keaton. He was gonna reprise his the '90s Batman. It had Brendan Fraser playing Firefly. We had something different. It wasn't the typical. Oh, it's Batman now, and you know, the one their cash cow. It was Batgirl. But, I digress. I digress. Jack and I could be here forever. We start going down this rabbit hole. Um, make sure to subscribe to Locked On Spurs, wherever you get your favorite podcast, Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes, now on YouTube, Ken's 5 Plus app, and the Ken's 5 YouTube page. And we thank you for making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every day. For your second listen, check out the latest news and rumors in the NBA in just 30 minutes every day with Locked On NBA. Locked On NBA, your daily NBA update in just 30 minutes. So for Jack Superman Thompson, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Locked on Spurs.